Welcome at the Trigger Weekend Masterclass. And today I'm going to share something about porting Excels. And I will take the following steps for that. First of all, we are going to create a user flow to import Excels. After that, I'm going to create the data structure to import the data too. And finally, I'm going to create some user flows so that we can see the end result of all the data that we imported. So let's start by going to the designer and to user flows because we are going to add the Excel import page first. And we've done that by uh, creating a wizard for you to make it as easy as possible. So we click on the plus, go to add user flow with wizard. And as you can see, the first one that we see is the Excel import. We click next. And then you get a question if you just want to import or also want to import or delete. But let's for this time choose only import. Then we'll click next and then it asks um, if you would like to allow duplicates or don't allow duplicates. Well, in this case, I'm going to not allow duplicates because you know we're going to import products and we only want one product at a time. Uh, well, one product in total in the application. And we're going to call this user flow import Excel. Don't forget to add it to the appearance, of course. Okay. And now we've created the first step in this masterclass, and that is to create a user flow to import Excel. However, the data in the Excel needs to be stored in your application. And you do that by creating data items. In this case, we are going to create two data items. One is products and the other one is product group um, because we would like to import both of them. Um, we go to design and data and add the data items. We're going to have products and you can see a little checkbox here which says allow users to import this data item. You have to check that. If you don't check that item, you won't be able to import. So make sure it's checked, press add, and then we can add the different properties. So we're going to add a product name, a product number, Right. And a nice um, thing to know about this, you have numbers and you have sequences. Keep in mind that you can't add a sequence uh, uh, with an Excel import because a sequence is determined automatically by Trigger itself. So you won't be able to do that. So in case you want to um, determine the product number yourself, use number. And we are also going to add a product group. And the same goes for that. We are going to allow users to import this data item. And we are going to add two properties to it, namely the product group name. And of course, we are going to link it um, to the products itself. So we have a reference. We're going to reference it to products. So, maybe product. And a single product group can have more than one product. And a single product can only have one product group. Okay. And as you can see now, we have a product linked to a product group and a product group linked to a product. So, what are we going to do now? We are going to add a user flow uh, for both products and product groups um, so that we can view the information that we imported using our Excel. So let's go to the user flows and we're also going to do that by using the wizard. So I'm going to add products, go, product group name. Okay. 
we are going to order it by product number. Smallest to largest product. And we are going to do the same for product groups. And a small tip, always make sure that you order your overviews because it makes it a lot easier for people to you know, recognize uh, and, and find their way through the list of information that you're showing on the overview. If you don't have an order, haven't defined it, Trigger will do that for you. And you know, um, it doesn't always make sense for people. So always define a... Um, define the way you want to order your information so there's this product groups there you go don't forget to add it to the appearance and there you go product and product groups okay so we've prepared our application to um, to be able to import information through the excel import and now we are going to import the actual Excel. First, of course, I need to publish my application. So let's do that first. We are going to um, create the Excel to import the information. So how do you define the Excel to import your information? What you do is you name the worksheet, uh, you give it the same name as your data item. So in this case, we have two data items. One is products and one is product groups. Um, and it needs to be exactly the same as uh, what you entered in the data uh, model. So in this case, it's product and product group. So let's do that. So we have worksheet one here. And let's start with product group. Okay. And we have products. Product. The reason why I start at product group is because products will be linked to product groups. And what Trigger does, it first imports product group and then it imports product. That means that if you would turn it around, it won't be able to import all the data because it doesn't know to which product group it needs to link the product because the product groups haven't been imported yet. Yes, yeah, so always do it in the way that you would do it manually yourself as well. First create product groups, then products where you link the product to the product group. So we start with product group. What we do is we create columns and rows and the column is the name of the property. So in this case, product name and the rows are the uh, product groups that we have. So in this case, we have uh, the product group, the property name is product group name. I'm going to copy it and paste it. And for instance, we can do hardware, software, and what else do we have? Well, let's keep it at hardware and software. So we have a, a worksheet with the product groups that we would like to import. Then we will go to the products itself. And products are uh, consist of a product name, a product number, product number, and a product group. Um, and the product group is a very important one because it is linked to a different data item and we have to tell trigger to what property of that specific data item um, the excel is linked so in this case we only have one property but we still need to define it because we have we actually have two properties in the product group data item which is the product group name itself and all the products it's linked to so um 
And you do that by using the underscore in the, in the column name. So in this case, we have product group, which is the name of the property of uh, in the data item product. And we are going to refer that to the property product name, product, sorry, product group, right, name in the data item product group. I will show you how that works in the data item itself. So we have a product which has a product group and that one is linked, you can see it over here, is linked to product group name. So product group name is the unique part of product group which we will link product to. Um, so I do have to change this because it's like this. Is this correct? No, I did have a good, okay, I did have it correctly. So we have, for instance, a printer which has product number one, two, three, four, five, and it's linked to the product group hardware. We also have the product name laptop, which has one, two, three, four, six, which is also hardware. And for instance, we have a Windows as operating system, and it has product number one, two, three, four, uh, seven which is software and we also have office which is one two three four eight which is also software let's go to the application as you might remember i said that the um, we import without duplicates and to do so we need to define what uh, property of the data item is unique because if you want to be able to um, keep the duplicates out of it, out of your, your data set, you need to define which one shouldn't be duplicated. So we need to do that because if we don't, it won't work. And you do that by adding the um, uh, phrase ID behind the property name. So in this case, we have product number and every product has a unique product number. So this is the ID that we would like to use. So we're going to say ID in, and the same we will do with product group, which is also ID. Okay, save, and let's go back to our import Excel. So we have the user flow import Excel. I'll show you first that I don't have any products or product groups in the system yet. So import Excel, select the file, import products, say done. And it says, hey, you have imported data successfully. And if we would go to product groups first, you will see hardware and software. And if we go to products, you will see all the products linked to those product groups. There you go. Do you see this button over here or there? Well, somewhere hit it and you will be notified.